listen shout out to the asteroid that took out the dinosaurs because the world back then was insane some of the animals walking around back then would have been a serious problem honestly prehistoric animals made no goddamn sense the tallest animal that we know is called the let me let me get this the, the soro poseidon this would be you next to the soro poseidon i don't care if this animal was harmless i don't care if it was a herbivore and wouldn't hurt a fly that is insane. I'm glad it all got blown up. We had to start again. Here is a list of reasons why I'm grateful to the asteroids that took out the dinosaurs. Number one, Arthur Pluro, Arthur, Arthur Plura Armata. This thing right here what is a is massive that? millipede that lived between 290 to 345 million years ago. And when I say massive, look at this thing. It was 2.5 meters tall. That is eight foot two, bro. I believe that I'm a rational person. I believe that I'm a rational thinking person who does things that make sense. If I saw an eight foot tall insect approaching me, I'd commit seppuku. That's not an experience I want to live through. Well, to be honest, it wouldn't approach you standing up straight. Like it wouldn't approach you like, like standing like it's on, on feet, it'd be laying down. But imagine like hearing like the, the thousands of, of, of little footprints on your on your like kitchen tiles as it approaches you. I'm good, I'm good. Honestly, an eight foot tall millipede approaching you would sound like a stampede. I'm so grateful that this thing doesn't exist anymore. If it never went extinct, how could you possibly live your life knowing that something like that is out there? That would be a constant thorn in your side. First and foremost, look at its face. Hell no. You know those people who are like, why are you scared of insects? They're more scared of you than you're scared of them. That you're bigger than them. That's not the case for prehistoric insects. Earth during the Triassic period was basically just the Chimera and Ark. These things were a threat. Next we have Mega Neurophis Parmiana, which was basically just a supersized dragonfly. And when I say supersized, I mean super sized. Look at it next to the average man. Do you understand why this is a problem? If you had this thing flying around you, I wouldn't blame you for thinking that you're around the helicopter. Like honestly, imagine it flies towards you. You try to sway it. You're gonna hurt your hand. This thing is this thing's thick. Oh, hell no, man. What I had to look up how fast this thing was. Take a wild guess at how fast you think. What is the top speed of Mega Neurophis Parmiana? Oh wait. It's 35 miles per hour. F 35 miles per hour, bro. That is unacceptable. I can't think of a word that can accurately describe how insane that is. 35 miles per hour. Like just flying towards you, bro. It's just big. Wingspan. Just, just, just big. For no reason. Like, why? Like, why? Why? Flying insects in general are the worst creations that have ever graced the planet. You've got what? Mosquitoes. Houseflies, they're so annoying. Like a housefly comes in and it can't leave. How could a housefly will come through the tiniest crack in your window and then struggle to get out? Bro, what are the chances that you managed to get in here in the first place if you cannot get out the same way you came back in? But for real, I'm genuinely serious. I have serious beef with flying insects, moths in particular, useless. They evolved wrong. Why are you a nocturnal animal that is attracted to light? Does that even make sense? Shout out to the person who invented the bug zapper and fly swatter, the electric one. In fact, let's look up who invented the electric fly swatter. We got our boy, I'm gonna butcher this name. I apologize in advance. We got Sao E, Sao E, Sao E, she, we got our boy Sao e. I hope it's Sawi. I'm, I'm, I guess the, the, tea is, the tea is silent, I'm presuming. He invented the, the fly swatter in 1996. And then we got William F. Former and Harrison L. Chaplin invented the bug zapper in 1934. Shout out to them. Heroes. They, they deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. I can't speak. They deserve the Nobel Peace Prize for their contributions to humanity. We needed that. Next we have Paul Nomo Scorpius. Yes, we're going to go with that pronunciation. I don't know th these names. These names are, 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 are these names are hurting me. Paul Nomo Scorpius was basically just a big ass scorpion. This thing would not have been nice to see. Scorpions, in my opinion, are just spiders with weapons, and we don't need that type of animal to have serious mass. When Paul Nomo Scorpius was alive, that thing was almost a meter long. Do you understand how durable a meter long scorpion would have been? You need a gun to deal with that. Animals from millions of years ago 
just didn't make sense. Like, why why were they all so big? I get it, there was more oxygen in the atmosphere then, but why does that make why does that make you 94 times bigger than what you should be? That is not right. But anyway, apparently Pungnomo Scorpius was found in Scotland. So that's a fun fact. Shout out to the people of Scotland. Next we have Atacopus Firmbriungus. Atacopus firm Firmbriungus. Yeah, that's Ungus. Firmbriungus. These, na these names are actually disgusting. These are abhorrent names. This is the first spider to make the list. And Atacopus Firmbriungus wasn't a big spider, but it just looks funky. So it made the list. Honestly, look at this thing. If I saw bro in my house, I am burning my, my shit down. I am burning my house down. In fact, I'm burning my house down and my neighbor's house down just to be safe. In fact, pour napalm over the whole area. You know what, instead of that, put a dome. Put a dome over the town. Yeah, like Simpson style. Suck out all the air, create a vacuum. We need to make sure that no stone is unturned in case they're hiding in any crevices. Let's make sure we do this and do it properly. Let's be thorough. Okay, next we have the Jack, J, Jack, Jack. Next we have J, Jackalop, Jackalopterus. Jackalopterus. What are these names, bro, bro. Bro, these names have been spinning me. Spinning me. We have to do like eight takes to say each word. Whoever came up with the names of these animals, suck your mum, bro. Suck you. This is, this is like, I'm struggling. Jackalopterus. Jackalopterus. What is that? But anyway, I guess the ugly ass name fits because look at this thing. Like honestly, look at it, get a closer look. And apparently this thing could go underwater. That is nearly Diddy levels of freakiness. Notice how I said near, because nothing is beating Diddy levels of freakiness. That, that's, that's as freaky as it gets. A thousand bottles of baby oil, bro. <laughs> Lock him up and throw away the key. That guy is a professional gooner. Anyway, for anybody who was like confused, why are you happy about that asteroid wiping out the dinosaurs? It's because of things like this. Do you, are you understanding where I'm coming from now? These insects, these animals in general, if they were alive today, would genuinely affect your quality of life. Imagine having to share a planet with things like this on land and sea, that is a nightmare. I've even forgot to mention that that thing was three meters long, three meters long, that is an abomination. Prehistoric insects had no business being that big. Next we have Titanomyroma, big, and there's no other way of putting it. Look at these things, they're massive. This is it next to a bird. This is like a hummingbird or a woodpecker, I don't know. One of you bird nerds, can you like let us know in the comment section what bird this is, please, thank you. Honestly, I just need to know why. What was the reason? Can you imagine running into an ant that was basically the size of a mouse? Plus, it's never just one ant. Its squad's gonna be somewhere nearby. Ants roll D. If aliens exist, Triassic slash prehistoric period Earth, is 100% the reason why they never came back. Imagine you discover a planet, it's just right for life, all the perfect conditions, you go there and you've basically just discovered Pandora's box. You've got these massive insects that are bigger than you, 50, 50 foot tall animals, super predators around every corner. I would never come back either. That's what the, you just walked into the halls of Hades. I'm willing to bet money that an alien species has mapped out all of the Milky Way galaxy, but then they've put a big X over our little quadrant because they're like, don't go there. Don't go back there because last time we went there, last time somebody went there, it was insane. Be safe, don't go. Now we can move on to the actual dinosaurs, the ones that we know and love, the ones that are easy to pronounce. The T-Rex. Okay, let me break it down for you. A 40 foot tall, 8,000 kilogram lizard that can run up to 50 miles per hour. If you run into it, if humanity ran into a Tyrannosaurus Rex today, it would cause us problems. With all of our modern technology, we would have to build cities to make them T-Rex proof. The human population wouldn't be as large as it is today if that thing was still alive. The Tyrannosaurus Rex would be out here catching bodies. That thing was devious. The T-Rex low key might be the most overpowered life form that has ever walked on a planet apart from humans because that it needed to be nerfed. It had to get patched. And apparently the T-Rex got one of the biggest debuffs in the history of life on this planet. I've seen videos online and people saying that the T-Rex basically became the chicken. But I guess that doesn't really make sense. I guess maybe they have a common ancestor because can you imagine going from probably the greatest hunter in the history of the world to the most hunted thing in the history of the world. How many chickens do you think get eaten every single day? In fact, I've got the figures here. According to Big Think, 
202 million chickens a day. Chickens sharing a common ancestor with the T-Rex is one of the funniest things I've ever come across. That's like you being related to an Olympian, like, like Michael Phelps, and you're just a couch potato. I left this one till last because it's called Predator X. I don't know why this dinosaur has the name of a summer blockbuster villain, but apparently that is it. To be fair, the name makes sense. This seems warranted because look at this guy. This, this is madness. The best way I can describe this thing is like a supersized underwater T-Rex, just smoke personified, 26 feet long, five tons, pure deviosity. Thank God this thing doesn't exist anymore. Look at it next to a blue well and look at you. That would be you, that would be us. The ocean is honestly already terrifying enough as it is, Predator X, or aka the Pleosaurus will just be overkill. And what makes that part of Earth's history so insane is some of these animals were alive at the same time. Navigating the world back then must have been insane. Can you imagine if you weren't a big predator? You're just a small herbivore going about your day. You leave your little burrow and walk into a world of just natural disasters, living natural disasters. Quickly, I'm just gonna reel off some honorable mentions. The Velociraptor. Okay, imagine an ostrich. Now imagine a demon ostrich with a switch blade embedded in its foot. Glad that's gone. Then we have the Spinosaurus. This has been named the most deadly dinosaur. Why? I don't know. Glad it's gone as well. Moving on to the Pterosaurus. Here's a picture of it. Do I have to say anything else? What is that? Now we've got the Parasaur. The Para... The Parasaurolophila. Para... We got this thing. It's kind of cute, I think. But the more I look at it, the less cute it gets. And... I'm glad it's gone. I'm glad it's gone. I'm glad all of these things are gone, bro. Last but not least, we have the Gigantoraptor. Yes, the Gigantoraptor. Some of these dinosaur names sound like they were made up by children. The Gigantoraptor. Big demon chicken. I can't think of any other way of describing what we are looking at right now. If chickens had enough mental ability to come up with their own gods, I feel like this is what they would come up with. But anyway, those are my list of reasons why I'm grateful that the asteroid took out the dinosaurs. Honestly, Arthur Plura Mata and the Jal, the Jal, the Palopolos, whatever that damn thing was called. All I needed to see to be in favor of a mass extinction event, I never want to see anything like that in life. Sometimes I do wonder what really cool things aren't around now that would have been here if what happened didn't happen, but oh well. But yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff that you have to do at the end of the video. Take care. I'll see you next time I upload.